relative velocity. For relative velocity in 2T, I hope you, you remember the formula for calculating velocity, relative velocity. If I'm writing VAB, that means it's VA minus VAB. VAB is velocity of A. This is how you calculate relative velocity. If it is one dimensional, then you can simply drop this vector sign. In one dimension, you can drop this vector sign. Simply write this as VA minus VAB. But if you have motion in 2D, then you cannot drop these vector signs. You are supposed to use the complete vector subtraction. So I'm giving you first question. There is no formula for relative velocity. It's just this formula V minus V. The rest is vector subtraction. So just for the sake of clarity, let's start with this question. Two cars. A and B. So this is VA, this is VB. Which is five meter per second. This is VB, which is 10 meter per second. This example will clear all steps involved in calculating relative velocity. So you need velocity of A with respect to B, VAB which is vector VA minus vector V. See, you cannot subtract them directly. You can't, you cannot write this as five minus 10 and minus five would be your answer. You can subtract directly only if your bodies are moving in same direction, but they are not moving in same direction. They're inclined at some angle. Let's say that angle is 60 degrees. Now to subtract them, you need complete vector subtraction. We, we did vectors in very detail. In vector subtraction, you know, if you are subtracting VA minus VB, that means you're actually adding VA to minus of V. That's VAB. So you need minus VB. This minus VB will act in a direction opposite to that of VB. This is the direction in which your minus VB is acting. This is it. And this is where the palogram completes. This is your velocity V. So velocity VAB is basically the sum of VA and minus of VA. So to calculate the magnitude of VAB, we have derived the formula for vector subtraction, which says this is A square plus B square. minus 2ab cos theta, minus 2va, vb, cos of angle between them, which is 60 degree. So you can write the magnitude of vab as, your va is five, so it's five square. vb is 10, so it's 10 square, minus twice of five into 10 into cos 60, which comes out to be half, this half will cancel this half. So your VAB is, it's root over 25 plus 10, which is 125 minus 50. So it's 75. So this is VAB, 175 meter per second. So once you got the magnitude, you need direction of relative velocity. Let's call this as beta. For direction, I'm calculating this angle, angle which VAB makes with VA. So for tan beta, the formula is, this is this also we have derived in vector subtraction. B sine theta by A minus B cos theta. Now this, the choice of A and B is very specific here. So the vector with respect to which you have defined this angle alpha is basically your A and the another one is B. So I have defined this beta with respect to this vector. Its name is VA, so that's A for me and this is B. If I would have defined beta with this thing, then this will be A and this will be B. So the choice of A and B depends upon the choice of beta. 
So when I substitute all values here, your B is VB basically. It's VB sine 16 divided by A, which is VA minus B, which is BB cos 16. It's root 3 by 2 by V is 5, V is 10, cos 67. 5 minus 5. So it's 5 root 3 by 0. It's infinite. Yes, no, it will be infinite. Tan beta is infinite. That means a beta is tan inverse infinity. When you get infinity in, for, in tan, for what, for what angle you got infinity in time? 90. 90. So beta is 90 degree. So for problems on relative velocity in 2D, we proceed in this way. We just use the formula of relative velocity VA minus VB and the rest is vector subtraction. Now in relative velocity in 2D, we have two types of particular problems. Uh, one is rain and man problem and another is river boat problem. Because rain and man problem is given in NCRT, but river boat problem, there's just one numerical on river boat problem. But NCRT have not discussed that problem in very detail. See, it's just application of relative velocity in 2D only. We need not even remember any new formula for this rain and man problem. This is just a type of numerical. So see what this rain and man problem says. So uh, this is my horizontal. When I say horizontal, that means both east, west, north, south, all directions here. This is this is the surface of Earth. Horizontal surface of Earth. This is this man. This man is standing on the ground. He is stationary. The raindrops are falling vertically down. So we'll observe that raindrops are falling vertically downwards. To save himself from rain, he will hold his umbrella in this direction. Like he will hold his umbrella in vertically upwards direction and he can save himself from rain. So when the man is at rest, he observed that raindrops are falling vertically downwards. Right? This is what usually happens. You can connect this with a real life example. Let's assume this a rainy day, rain is falling and, but there's no wind, air, there's no wind velocity, there's no velocity of air. It's a calm day, only raindrops are falling vertically downwards. So this is man at rest, he's experiencing raindrops falling in vertically downwards direction. Now, this man starts moving horizontally with some velocity. Now, so when you were stationary, you were observing that raindrops were falling vertically downwards. You hold this umbrella in vertical direction and save yourself from it. But what will happen if you start running horizontally of, or if you sit on a two-wheeler, on a bike or on a cycle and you start moving horizontally? Have you ever experienced that if you are moving horizontally, then raindrops will still fall vertically downwards or you will experience them at some angle. Umbrella and vertical direction. When you, when you are at rest, you can save yourself from rain because raindrops are falling vertically downwards. But by holding that umbrella in the vertical direction, if you start running or if you sit on a two-wheeler on a cycle or something, then you will get wet. You will observe that raindrops now are coming vertically. They're basically coming at some angle. They are coming in this way. So now while moving, if you want to save yourself from rain, then you won't hold umbrella in vertical direction. You will hold umbrella at some angle with the vertical. So when you were at rest, you were holding your umbrella in this way. But when you start walking or you start running, then you have to tilt your umbrella at some angle. So this problem deals with why you have to tilt your umbrella. What happened to the rain when you start moving? So that's basically rain in my problem. The problem is this, that why are you tilting your umbrella when you are moving? 
when you were at rest raindrops were falling vertically downwards why it happens that when when you move the raindrop starts coming at some angle so this man is moving horizontally with a velocity v so when this man was at rest he was observing this vr the velocity of rain with respect to ground but when when this man starts moving he will not experience vr he will rather experience the relative velocity of rain with respect to him when when man was at rest he experienced velocity of rain with respect to ground but when he moved he experienced he experienced a relative velocity of rain he experienced a relative velocity of rain so this is what you're supposed to calculate you're supposed to calculate the relative velocity of rain so that we write it as vrm this vrm is velocity of rain with respect to man yes so at some angle it's because when he is moving he is not experiencing the velocity of rain he is experiencing the relative velocity of rain which is at some angle with the vertical so to calculate vrm you can write this as vrm is vr minus of vm again minus of vm means if this is vm then this would be minus of vm you're adding vr with minus of v so this is your writing a triangle this diagonal is vr the angle between them is 90 degree the angle between vm and vr is 90 degree so for magnitude of vrm i can use this relation it's root over a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta so i'm using vr square plus vm square Minus two v r v m cos ninety cos ninety comes out to be zero. So your v r m is root over v r square plus v m square. V r m is root over v r. How much is v r? this velocity of rain uh, this vr is basically velocity of rain with respect to ground and this vm is the velocity of man with respect to ground this is how we calculate vr after vr you can do one more thing you need to calculate the direction in which the rain drops are coming so basically the rain drops are making this relative velocity is making some angle beta with the vertical you need this angle beta for tan beta we can use this relation tan beta is b sin theta over a minus b cos theta next you can substitute the values of a and b so your tan beta is b so if i write all these values here this will be vm sin 90 divided by va which is vr Minus Vm cos 90. So sine 90 is one, cos 90 is zero. You are left with tan beta, which comes out to be Vm by Vr. Okay. So this is angle with the vertical. So that means raindrops are coming in this direction. Raindrops are coming in this direction. These are coming in this direction.
raindrops are coming in this direction. So you see, if the man was at risk, then raindrops were coming vertically downwards because he was experiencing just the velocity of rain. But when he is moving, he is experiencing a relative velocity of rain with respect to man. That was his, the raindrops appears to come at some angle. Now, if what he want to save himself from rain, then he will hold umbrella in this direction. He will tilt umbrella at an angle. If this is beta, this is also beta. He will tilt umbrella at an angle beta with the vertical. So to save himself from rain, to save himself from rain, from rain, he will hold umbrella at angle beta with respect to what so that's this is rain and man problem so to save himself from rain he will hold umbrella at an angle beta with the word so that is basically rain and man problem okay you can do this thing using one more method you can solve all these things using even using plane geometry that's method two and majority of numerical, I will use method two. See, you have to make this diagram. After this diagram, let's call this as A. I call this as B and let's call this as C. So in triangle ABC, each side of triangle will represent a vector. See, the side AC is representing VRM. The side AB, this one, is representing vector VR. Side CB is basically representing VM, the magnitude of VM. Now, this is a right angle triangle. You can use Pythagoras theorem here. So, the Pythagoras theorem says that AC is root over AB square plus CB square. So, how much is AC? AC is VRM. I'm just using Pythagoras theorem, nothing else. It's AB, which is VR square plus VM square. So instead of using the complete formula of relative velocity, you can use directly the rules of right angle triangle. And even if I want to calculate tan beta from here, tan beta is simply perpendicular upon base. This perpendicular is CB, base is AB. CB is VM, AB is VR. So this is what we calculated in the last section that TB is tan beta is VM by V. 